components of cement because you're dealing with bridges and you're dealing with government contracts, all right? The last thing the government wants a lawsuit. Anyway, cement take 28 years to cure. A lot of people don't know that. Trust me. I don't think it's really anyone know that. Cure meaning fully hard. Like um, during the 28 years while the cement is being cured, uh, drying to cure, to become fully hard, uh, fully dry basically, there's a lot of carbon in the cement. You got to have carbon to create cement. Carbon and metal, not good. It's basically like gas and a lighter. You don't put light, uh, fire on a ga on gasoline. It's going to explode. Even though the steel metal they put in houses, that the, that is the like the, uh, the, the, the 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 skeletal system of a of a house, meaning the inner part of the concrete. So they're using steel, but this the concrete produces carbon, and the carbon rot the steel. Which in turn the steel turned the rot the rust turned to dust. So over the twenty eight years, what I've learned by speaking to somebody who actually built bridges, he said by the time a house reached twenty eight years, where those steel is in the wall, there's a lot of empty gaps there now because a lot of the steel is already rotted out. And so basically, the foundation you think is as strong as you think is no longer there. I'm not saying all the steel will be rotted out, but a majority of the steel will. Because what's happening with the concrete is that carbon is in concrete. It ha you have to put it in concrete. It's part of the component. It's very acidic towards metal, meaning that it rusts. It eat constantly eating away at the iron. It's like a pest. It will never stop. The only time it will stop eating away at the metal is when the concrete is fully dry. That, folks, take 28 years. So basically what I'm trying to say to you is that if, you're, uh, if a building passed beyond 28 years, the structure of the building is already compromised. That's basically what I'm trying to say to you. With the high-rise building now, with the bigger steel, it eat away at the steel, but not as bad as the smaller steel in the homes. So with the high rise building, even though after 20 years, the concrete stopped, it stopped producing carbon. It still created some form of uh, defect in the infrastructure, one way or the other. It might not eat away as much as the smaller steel, but the point is it's eaten away at the steel. That's concrete, guys. Concrete eat metal. And trust me, you tell this to somebody that built a house, they'll think you're crazy, but it's true. Because the person that's building the house only have the knowledge of how to build the house. They don't have the knowledge of the component that's in the concrete. They don't. Guys who have that knowledge are on a bigger scale when it comes to uh, construction because they have to have that knowledge, especially bridges. And normally they are saying, but oh, a bridge can only take up to can take up to twelve magnitude. No, if a bridge go beyond nine nine to nine point five magnitude, it's over. At that point, it's done. But they say twelve. You know, they're not trying to scare people too much. But if you're on a bridge and a nine nine point five hit that bridge, hasta la vista, man. You're gone at that point. So I'm just I'm just you know I'm not trying to sugarcoat nothing. But, you know, uh, the general information is 12 magnitude. The only thing that can take 12 magnitude in this world is a building in China. There's no, no infrastructure on the planet apart from that building that can take a 12 magnitude, not even a bridge. All right. So normally by 9.5, it's done with bridges. So once again, guys, as I said, with cement, as any house, as long as the house is already put together, Carbon is eaten away at the skeletal system of that house, which is the steel they put in the middle of the concrete to hold it for it to dry. As soon as the concrete hit the steel, the steel is being eaten away at because of carbon. All right, so don't ever forget that. And it take twenty eight years for the for the for, for the um, concrete to be fully dried, and by that time, a lot of the steel is already uh, eaten away. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that. 
you know, the older the home, the chance of the home falling down, it's a lot higher, obviously, because the, 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 the steel structure is not as strong and there's a lot of probably segment in the wall that is already, there's nothing there. It's just a, a basically a hole, you know, so it is what it is. It's not something that they're going to tell you when you purchase a home, because obviously if you tell people this information when you purchase a home, will people actually want to buy the home? No, it's not that encouraging, you know. You don't want to tell people, hey, if you buy a house that's over 20 year, 28 years old, there's a good chance the infrastructure might be, it might be horrible. I'm not saying it is, but there's a high possibility that's not something you want to put in the bill thing when you're trying to sell a property. You don't want to say that, but I get it. So that's why they don't really pass this information amongst the people that actually sell homes. They really don't want them to know this, by the way. Not even the banks that are actually giving out the loans know this information. Not a lot of people don't. So that's the information I just want to pass to you guys. So when you always, I normally try to like places that I go a lot and spend a lot of my time. I try to find out the age of the building. I ask some of these questions sometimes um, f with people. Sometimes they're looking at me like, I'm like, why does this guy want to know the age of this building for? Well, there's a reason. Yeah, I might look crazy to you, but there's a reason why I'm asking these questions. You know, so um, yeah, it's, it's, it is. I know this, inform this type of information doesn't make any sense right now, but I promise you, these are the information that's actually going to help you survive. Um, um, because I know I know exactly what's coming. Um, what I see coming is big, big quakes, huge quakes that we have never seen before. Uh, tsunami we have never seen before. Um, volcanoes we have never seen before. Um, I do believe Yellowstone will erupt uh, in my lifetime very, very soon. Um, firm believer in that. Um, I'm, as I said, no fear mongering here. Uh, basically, I'm, everything I've been writing on, I'm on Facebook, you guys are seeing it for yourself. It's unfolding right in front of you. So, you know, I'm not trying to scare people. I'm just trying to wake people up that this is now our new normal. You know, if you think, oh, I'm going to go back to the days when, you know, and as I said, for the past three days, I've been watching California. I can guarantee you that the fault line underneath California is already cracked. California is going to be but like an island by itself where you have to like take a plane and go to California if you want to go to California. And chances are neither one, people wouldn't want to go to California because it's, 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 it's going to be a piece of land separated from the United States. And it's, 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 it's in the near, very, very near future because I already know it's cracked. It's already cracked, a huge crack. There's a huge crack from San Francisco all the way down. Let me pull it up. I can tell you exactly where the cracks it, and it's getting worse. So that's why it's easy for me to predict these things. Um, pull it. Let me get on my. The crack actually, the crack it start cracking now, a little bit south of Cal, uh, San Francisco, uh, Los Angeles, but the 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 bigger portion of the crack is actually over there in um, uh, San Francisco, moving down towards San Diego. All right. So when I say crack, meaning that you're not seeing the crack in the, with your eyes in the ground. It's I mean crack like miles underneath the ground already. The fault line is already cracked. So meaning that it's going to be extremely, extremely active, and the crack is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what was. That's what happened yesterday. Th that's the result of it. Because when it when they crack right uh, right south of Los Angeles, I said it. I was like, holy crap, the shot, the fault line just shifted. And the next, for the next three days, is is people in California are basically living in Zootopia. You know, they, I'm reading these articles and these people are freaking out. And people are waking up, their, hosts, their, their homes are a mess. But people, you know, if, if you guys in California are watching my videos, as I said, I'm not here to scare people. I'm just letting you guys know that if you do decide to stay, um, stay. Uh, be go. You want to go extreme. You go no, go more north of California. You want to stay away from the south as possible, and also the shorelines. Go inline and go north. All right. Me personally, I will pack my stuff and and and, and I'll be gone. You know, I would never stay in California. I would never live in California. I wouldn't live in California. Some family live in California because I know what's coming there. And I'll, I'm not saying California is a bad place to live. It's because if I decide to live somewhere, I'm looking at the future, and when I look at the future. It's not pretty, but at the same time, not a lot of people are watching the seismic activity. You know, I know a lot of people don't know where to go to get this information, but I do watch them all the time. It's one of the most active fault line, and um, 
my prayers will always go off for the people of California because I, you know, the, the envision that I get for that place is, is really, really not pretty. Um, I see a lot of body bags going to California in the near future. As I said, I'm not here to wish bad. I, I'm saying this because I'm not here to sugarcoat anything either. I see a lot of death in California. Um, I see a lot of disaster in California. Um, I see a lot of sinkholes and I see cities falling into these sinkholes. I see a lot of destruction with these cities too. So, but you know, it's just, it's, it's, you know, saying this information and for someone to actually take heed to it and listen, because that's where they all, they spend most of their life. It's hard away. It's hard for them to get away from that. And I get it, but you know, I, I just want you guys to be aware. And, but if you do want, if you do decide to stay, you want to get away from, to, and just to be on the safe side and lower your risk from quakes, get away from the shoreline and go north. And you guys will be cool. All right. So that's basically the information I want to give you guys. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm a little bit exhausted. I uh, got to get some sleep. I uh, got to go watch a movie first. All right. You guys stay safe. God bless. Peace.